Coming up. I was born into darkness, physically and spiritually. I was passed the baton to become the high-ranked devil worshiper in New York City. A lot of people watching are like, oh, please, that's on the movies. That didn't really go on. Did this really Oh, that's not the place? movies, believe me. John Ramirez unmasks the demonic and reveals how a divine encounter with God changed his life. When I came back, I, I knew, I felt in my heart that the Lord said, this is the only opportunity I can give you. The conversation starts now. What does it take to overcome darkness, and is there real power in the dark arts? Today we're taking a look inside the world of the occult to expose the truth about its power and weaknesses. Joining me around the table is Rachel Lamb. Are you interested in this subject today? It's very interesting. Not a lot of people are talking about stuff like this, yeah. and I know it's something that's you know, people encounter this every day. It's, it's all over TV now, it's, you yeah. know, in, in our world. April Simons, how hey, are you? I'm doing great. Excited about the show. Yeah, this is good, isn't it? It is. It's good for us to hear as the body of Christ. Yeah, and to talk about it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cindy Murdoch. Hi there. Are you ready? I'm ready. And I realize <laughs> what will be unveiled and revealed today that we need to really walk in the authority of the power that's been given to us because darkness is real. And to talk about that today is uh, John Ramirez. Welcome to the table. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm blessed <laughs> to be here with you. Uh, Thank you so much. Well, for John Ramirez, the occult is not just a spooky topic he studied. He grew up surrounded by witchcraft, spells, and rituals, and in fact, rose to the level of high priest. But despite all the power he had gained, he would find there was still a power greater than he'd ever known. Now, I know the enemy hates it when we expose him, and that's what we're yeah. going to do today. For those yes. of you that are dabbling in any of this type of stuff, or you have a family member that is, I really want you to pay close attention. But let's go back to the beginning. You were born into a, a family where some of this ritualistic stuff was going on. Talk about that. Yeah, I, I, was, born, uh, I was born into darkness, uh, physically and spiritually. A broken home, broken family, uh, abused dad. I grew up in that kind of environment. Uh, my dad was home, he was still absent. There was no love in the house. Uh, there was cruelty, beat my moms all the time. My dad was a, my dad was an alcoholic, his grandfather was an alcoholic, generational curse. Uh, and on top of that, to, to put the icing on the cake, it was all demonic witchcraft from Santeria, from spiritualism, from communicating, they call it the dead, but it's not the dead, it's demons familiar spirits. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff, at the age of eight years old, I was already in, in, engulfed in the dark side. I'll see demons walk in my house like mm -hmm. it was family. Mm -hmm. I'll see yeah. shadows. Someday I'll see people. Were some of them gruesome looking, normal no, looking? No, no, very, I tell you, when I used to meet with the devil in my later years, the devil was very charismatic, very mm -hmm. handsome mm -hmm. looking. Wow. And, and, and as you know, the Bible said he was an angel that was very beautifully made. Mm -hmm. So he'll come in that form of a human, charismatic, very elegant, very well-spoken. Yeah. So you had a volatile relationship with your father. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that. He, it had a huge impact on you as a little boy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it was a home that it was just, I mean, it was, it was sun and pain at home. You, there was no uh, money for food. Wear the same clothes throughout this is the in year. What the Bronx? New in the Bronx, York? South Bronx. Yeah. yeah, South Bronx. It was uh, outside of the neighbor was killings. Uh, mm -hmm. We lived in a building. There was only three families out of thirty families. The building was empty. We were like squatters. Wow. Now my father was a cab driver. My father was making great money. He got a support for his family. There was that you know there was no lack of money on his behalf. But he would take the money and spend it on a woman on the streets, a woman that he would go out with, a woman he'd meet, mm. nothing home. So growing up in that environment, see my father beat my mother, come home drunk, demanding stuff, uh, devil worshiping. He had a room set up, I mean, just a room set up with all his demonic activity. We would see how he devil worshiped. Mm. We would feel the presence of the devil coming to mm -hmm. the house. It, one time he turned the whole living room on fire. We thought the whole house was going to go on fire. The whole building was going to go on fire. Yeah. You know, something did happen when you were eight years old that might have been maybe a turning point where you really sold yourself to the devil, and, and it was in church, right? Did you go to a, 
a service? Well, I went, I went, I went, actually it was like a, a schoolyard, like in the South Bronx, we had a lot of activity in schoolyards, okay. uh, a lot of music playing schoolyards. So there was a, 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 this individual pastor at the time, he set up a platform and he had like an event out, open doors. And the event out open doors, uh, he preached, sure, I guess he, that's what they called at the time. I was, I didn't know what was going on. He, he, got a, he got on the mic and said some words about Jesus and love and all this stuff. But then he came off the stage and he said, I want to pray for all the people here. And I got excited. I was like, wow, he's going to pray for me. And you could feel the love of God in the schoolyard. I mean, it was open air. You could feel the love. And when he stepped out and he started to pray for people, the closer he got to me, my heart was just pumping mm -hmm. uh, for joy because I had never been loved. I never, my mom, only my mom would say once in a while we, she loved us. And my dad would never say that. So when, when, that, when he came and he looked at me, he looked at me up and down and like, 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 was like a show off, show boat type of thing. He looked at me up and down, and he went, like, then he went to the next person, prayed for the next person, passed me by. Because mm -hmm. he thought you were too young. He thought I was too young and insignificant mm -hmm. to pray for. Yeah. And uh, that really broke me. That really, really, really set the course for me uh, to be recruited to the dark side. Because you felt mm -hmm. rejection, I'm yeah. sure. Like, well, what does the Lord love me when he didn't mean it that way? But right. the whole point in that, Rachel, you made earlier, mm -hmm. how important is it to Yeah, no, I mean, children. here you are, you know, you feel rejected at home and unloved at home, and here's this opportunity when you feel like you're finally going to be accepted, you're finally going to be noticed, and you're passed by, and that's when the enemy used that small yeah. open door, mm -hmm. that insecurity to work in your life. I know that. You know, your dad did some witchcraft and that was in the home, but when was that moment when you really turned and got involved in the occult? It's, it's crazy because uh, I went with my aunt and my mom. I was a little boy, uh, you know, somewhere like after, uh, somewhere like I'm on my end of the year, eight years old, somewhere around there, close to my birthday. We went to a, they went, my aunt had to go, my aunt was a witch. So my aunt had to go every, every six months, you have to get a, a, an assessment by the devil, uh, car reading to see if you, what kind of grade you get. So my aunt went with, uh, with, with my mom's, dragged my mom's in with her. There was kind of, my mom was kind of dabbling in the occult just because she was like, my mom didn't know how to say no. Right. And out of and fear. they would do these like tarot cards. And tarot that kind cards, of stuff, yeah. they would do uh, parties, occult parties, <laughs> occult rituals. Mm -hmm. So they dragged me into which this lady's house. Which are all very dangerous, which by is, the way. Everything is dangerous. I mean, yeah. it, it, you can still be in three foot of water and a shark can still get you. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> so any, any, anything with the Ouija board, any tarot card, any, anything anything that, that, that points to the occult is dangerous because mm -hmm. it's just open door, open portal, an opportunity to get legal rights over your life. Right. So, mm -hmm. so when I went to this place, the, the lady was drawn to me and she started, started reading the cards to my aunt. She told my mother that if I didn't do this, this ceremony, that's when I was going to lose my eyesight. Wow. So my mom saw her, mm. all her furniture in her, in her bedroom to, for 250 bucks to do the ceremony for me. And that was my introduction to lose my whole childhood. And I went to the dark side. Wow. Mm. Mm. At 13, what happened? At, at 13, I, my, my dad, uh, my dad, it, 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 I was, we were sitting in the little room, my mom's, uh, some people. And my aunt came in busting into the doors. They killed Junior. And my dad got shot in the face for a woman that wasn't even his at the mm -hmm. age of 33 years old when he had a good wife home. Oh, and my wow. dad passed on. And then I, I became the high priest of the home. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what is interesting to me, out of all this, it's, it's so hard for at least me to relate because mm -hmm. I was raised in a Christian home, but yeah. it just shows me that not only does God have a plan for your life, but the devil also has a plan for yes. your life. Oh, it's yeah, our choice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so in all this, like, I, I even wonder how you, being raised in this home, how did you ever get to church at eight? And then did you ever through at 13, were you ever encountered with Jesus? Well, the, 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 church, the church situation was something I went to the schoolyard was, to play outside in the playground. But uh, the, the, the pastor was there doing an event. Okay. So that was my only encounter with the church. Mm -hmm. After that, we just grew some darkness. And, and, we, and then at the age of 13, my father got shot in the face. We went to his funeral. And, and the crazy thing, we went to my dad's funeral. You had like 50 something women show up to the funeral. Wow. That was like a slap in the face for my mom, my family. Wow. And then the devil said, now you're the high priest. Now, and, then, and then when I was younger, I remember I was laying in bed two in the morning, three in the morning to go to school and I would get up and, and pray. And I pray, I would, I would pray to the devil and say, kill mm. my dad and I'll become the next high priest. So the devil said, I killed the old to, um, kill the old to take the new. Wow. So my dad died at 33 and I became the high priest. 
How did you mm -hmm. feel like when your dad died? Because you never got that kind Peace. of reconciliation <laughs> with him. Mm. Never, you know, I think at the moment, uh, because the torment in the house, mm -hmm. the, the abuse in the house, the physical, the spiritual abuse, the love not being there, I felt a sense of peace because now he's gone, my mother don't get beat up anymore. Mm -hmm. Now love will come into the house, we'll probably get some good clothes. There was Christmases that we would get up in the morning, there was no gifts under the tree. Mm -hmm. so, so, so all that stuff, I said, now my dad's gone and we'll, we, we, we're gonna be able to celebrate like a family. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about um, how you then moved into that role as, as a high priest in the satanic occult. And would you gather others around and do these rituals? And I mean, a lot of people are watching like, oh, please, that's on the movies. That didn't really go on. Did this really Well, that's not the place? movies, believe me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the, 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 the devil is just as real mm -hmm. as, as, as the sun. And, I, and the, devil is, the devil has his kingdom. And it, and it runs by military ranks. The, Jesus has his kingdom, and you have to make a decision who you want to give the soul to, mm -hmm. who you want to give your life to. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and running into this whole thing and going to the occult. Already at the age of eight, I was already going to demon church. Mm -hmm. Demon church from, it, it, was, it was from seven in the evening, because I had to sit around a table like this, and imagine, mm -hmm. white cloth, water in the middle, water mean purification, and then sit with high-ranking warlocks that have been in the religion for 30 to 50 years that were training me to be groomed, oh to be God. to pass the baton. Are you passing your baton to your kids as a Christian? Wow. Mm -hmm. What are you passing to your yeah. kids? You know, and, mm -hmm. and this is, I was passed the baton to become the high-ranked devil worshiper in, uh, in New York City. Mm. Wow. From the age of eight to the age of 35 and to encounter Christ. And, and now was, I was, I, to me, demon church was normal. To me, mm -hmm. it was okay, yeah. it was fine. Now, because they said, well, God would start, with God would finish. Mm -hmm. With God would start, with God would finish. I thought they were talking about heaven. So what mm -hmm. kind of stuff would go on in these rituals? And what about uh, cursing mm -hmm. and spells and yeah. going after people, especially non-Christians to affect mm. their lives in a negative way. Did that kind of stuff go on? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, I was being trained to know colors, uh, colors because demon work with colors, numbers. I was being trained uh, by, by, by knowing what region, what territories demons operate in, like the, the, the Haiti, what demon uh, operate there, what principalities in charge of Haiti, what, what principality is in charge of Islam, what principalities in charge of New York City, how to ship uh, principalities after every year. They do a ceremony, they ship one, one principality to one region. That's why you see patterns and cycles that happen mm -hmm. in the news. You, uh, they say you see the rise here, and then you see the rise jump from that place, it jumps here. So what I do now, I watch the news, and I break it, and I, and I curse it, and I cut out the root and uproot it so it won't pass over to get going because that's the way it works. So the, so the enemy trained. is very strategic is what you're oh, saying. big time. So he has... Principalities and yeah. powers set up over territories, very strategic. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, and I've interviewed someone before that actually got involved in this as well, the astro projection. Oh, that was me. I had Molly Mo and Jeb Blue. And so you, your spirit would leave your body. And again, this was a satanic ritual that um, is really very dangerous. Yeah, like where oh, did you go? It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, you, you, you alive when you do that. I mean, you, you know that you, you, you're very conscious of what you're doing. So it's very dangerous because if you don't, if, if the person don't know how to do it, they'll be pronounced dead, mm -hmm. period. Oh. And the conversation pronounced dead. So, so there are people true. that had done it and weren't and able died. to come back. Come back and die wow. in the yeah. bed, pronounced dead, natural causes. What do you do? Yeah. So the, the, the reason the astral projecting was so important to the dark side, it was the fact it was so important to the dark side because if you can astral project and, you, and you've been escorted by a demon to astral project and go to certain neighborhoods. See, I was able to go to a certain neighborhood and curse the neighborhood because if I can take over the neighborhood and the spirit run, I was able to take over the people. So, so, and the only people, the only neighborhoods I was not able to take over were the Christian neighborhoods that were up at night praying for the neighborhood. Oh my goodness. They have more power wow. than anything I can imagine. So, did you recognize that Christians had a power available and how did you feel about that? Because you were on the other side. Upset. <laughs> Upset. Upset because I didn't finish the task. I didn't, I didn't finish the mission. Oh, I would actually wow. project, I would go into the neighborhood, I would be like uh, uh, midair, and then I see this group of people, and I know they were Christian because they were at the time they were dressed funny. They were dressed <laughs> with the whole big ponytail and all that other stuff. They were around. <laughs> they, they was real hardcore. They were holiness yeah. Christians. Yes, yes. Holy rollers. Holy rollers. They were probably <laughs> praying in a language too. You didn't understand. They were holding hands. <laughs> yeah. In a circle, and that means you, that means unity. That means there's power and unity. You can't break that. That's where two or three are gathered mm -hmm. exactly. together. Exactly. And I was not able to penetrate that, and they would chase me out the prayers, and they would chase me out of the neighborhood, and I would just mm -hmm. leave frustrated and angry because that night nothing got accomplished. Did you uh -huh. recognize that it was Jesus and His power was stronger than yours? 
I, I, at the moment, at the moment, no, because the frustration, the anger, and the bitterness that I had towards Christian, I became bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. So, so I, I, my mind, my mind was was uh, was so so saturated with. Uh, I didn't have a mind. I didn't have you a conscience. Yeah. I had a mission to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. Mm. Every Christian you come across, recruit yeah. Christians, hurt Christians, hurt Christian families, hurt Christian uh, babies, and all this other stuff, and then. Uh, how would you recruit people? I mean, what would you say that would make somebody want to do this? Power. See, you see, you see God is all powerful. We know, we know, I mean, there's no one like Jesus. I mean, he is. And and, Luce, and Satan copies everything. He has I mean, no original idea. No, no, because no it's, it can't, it's, it can't, Satan can't come up with nothing because he's a, <laughs> yeah. he's a created being. Yeah. So then yeah. he could create, right. but he can right. mimic and copy as an angel of light. Yeah. So discernment mm -hmm. in the body of Christ is so important. Mm -hmm. So you can discern from one voice from the other. So, so Satan copies everything that Jesus Christ does, mm -hmm. even to the point that Santeria sacrificed animals today. As you know, in, in Miami, it's legal. They sacrifice mm -hmm. animals because they're copying the Old Testament. Yeah. Wow, and so they use everything fear. Well, fear is fear the number like one. With the tarot right. cards, they fear is the number one fear. factor. Because if I can implant fear in you, then I can control you. And then big money. Mm. Wow. You make yes. huge money. So what were some of the devastating things that you saw happen to people as a result of being involved in all this? I, th I think the devastating thing that happened to people is it's, it's that they uh, put their hope in a force, a place that is not real. We are to the sense that it's no, is a dead end street. Satanism, mm -hmm. Satan, the kingdom of darkness is a dead end place, and they put their hope there. They put their money there. They put their invest their families in this place, and mm -hmm. they, and the results of that is not but brokenness. So the end is destruction. The end of that is destruction, which yeah. is what the Bible tells mm -hmm. us. Yes, the end of that mm -hmm. is destruction. And so even you, as you were moving up in this, in the ranks of darkness. Um, did you become disillusioned at any point? I, I, you know, one, one, one of the things that grabbed me the most is I was a master liar because my daddy was a master liar at the time. So the, 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 the point, I was sitting, I would come from clubs. I would go to five clubs, four clubs to recruit people to the dark side because I was very good at telling people the future. But there's no future. That's just a lie. Mm -hmm. Deception. Uh, um, so so I, 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 I came to a point that I was laying in my bed the next day or night and I would sit there in, in pure darkness and I didn't know what to laugh or cry because I was empty. Mm. I would do all these things. I would do all these false miracles. I would do all these false healings. I would do all these false things and then sit there and look at the situation and then recruited my daughter to the dark side too. Mm. So when I don't finish, she can finish. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting that you're sharing that. He was he's 33 at this point. It had seen a lot mm. of power demonstrated as it relates to the kingdom of darkness, but it's so beautiful to me how the Lord, mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit, yeah. will allow you to realize that emptiness and brokenness that you have on the inside. And you got to that point where you realized it wasn't enough. Exactly. And you were empty, you were lonely. You went to, I guess, sleep that night. Mm -hmm. And you said you had a vision or a dream. This is very important because I believe there's yeah. people watching right mm -hmm. now that that you can relate to what he's talking about. In fact, you just stopped to watch because of the, the conversation that we're having. You never watched the show before. <laughs> and, um, but there's a reason why is because God's going to, is, is going to speak to you and you're going to have, um, a supernatural encounter mm -hmm. where God reveals himself. So I want you to be ready for that, but li yes. listen to, uh, John's story and tell us what happened. Cause I don't know if, how, how the Lord could have reached you except <laughs> by way of something supernatural at this point, because you had gone so deep into darkness. But I love that about Jesus. He continues yeah. to reach oh. for us, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, the amazing thing was that, uh, the amazing thing that I was, one night, uh, before I, I, I went, the whole situation, how God reached me, and he, he woos you with his love. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing love that you can't say no to. Yeah. It just it just melts you because I, I I was I remember one morning I got up and I was watching a TV show I'm not gonna mention the show I was watching this crazy TV show I never watched it it was wholesome anyway at the time <laughs> I was watching a crazy TV show and I heard the voice of God for the first time he said he said he said my son I'm coming my son when I'm a, wow. when I was in darkness my son when I was in darkness wow. I'm coming soon what are you gonna do with your life and that mm -hmm. was one encounter there and then 
And then uh, a week later, I went to this demonic meeting, 17 warlocks, the highest warlocks in the region. Went to this mm -hmm. meeting, and then right, went to this meeting. And, and, and the thing was that it was, it was like 10 degrees outside New York City. And I went, we, we went at night to this meeting, to this base, we sat there, and then the principalities came to find out which one's gonna be ushered from one place to another. The reason I'm bringing that to just bring it to this point, it's, it's that I sat in this meeting, and, and, and I was like dumbfounded. I was like like numb because I was feeling the love of Jesus Christ, but I was mm -hmm. committed to the dark side for 25 years. So I was between two worlds. Yeah. So, 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 so uh, the, the, the principality came down about after 12 midnight, he came down he, and he, he spoke in demonic language. He called me son. Could I say something to you? So I spoke back to the demon and I told the demon, what do you want to tell me? He said, uh, this is what I want to tell you. He said, uh, you know what Jesus Christ, you know what God threw us out of heaven? Because he was jealous of us. Mm. And then at 10 degrees weather, I walked home that night. And I said, well, then God got to be bigger because God kept heaven. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, I go to hell. I go into this sleep that was something like if you put someone into anesthesia, sleep. And then I end up in this train that's going faster than human light. Human, human light. I mean, nothing that Were fast. there other people on the train oh, with the, you? Oh, the place, the, the, there was no room in the train. And then you can, the, the people, you could feel the fear in the train because they mm -hmm. know they were going somewhere. There was no return. Could you just hear the... The, the chug of the you, train, or could you hear people, or was you, it silent? You, the train was like the train was. Uh, you could feel the the, the the speed of the train, but the speed of the train it was not but fear. Mm. Wow. And then Jezebel was on the train, calling me traitor, traitor, traitor. And what did she look like? She was dressed in a very sophisticated, uh, war, like a Wall Street woman. Wow. <laughs> it was like yeah, that elegant. Traitor, mm -hmm. traitor. How so, did you know it was Jezebel? Because I, I, I had a contract with Jezebel too. Mm. So I knew it was Jezebel and, and she was traitor, you traitor, you traitor, you traitor. And then uh, when the train hit hell, it was a, such an explosion, a wreck. And then the doors opened. And when I came, I stepped out, there was a suffocation and there was a heat and, 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 and there was a desperation that wraps around you like a, like a garment. How real was this to you? Well, to leave 25 years of devil worshiping and take a chance that the devil was going to kill me if I left or all mm. the secrets of the kingdom of darkness mm. to lead that to follow men that I never knew. Wow. It was that real. It was so, that real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you woke up or came out of it, mm -hmm. when I came did out you of pray it, at that moment? or? Oh, oh yes. When I came out of it, it was my, 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 you could feel my spirit go back into my body. It's a funny thing because my spirit went into my body like, like if I was in ICU. And then when I used to, I used to project, my, body, my spirit would come into my body in a different way. Mm. So when I came back, I, I knew, I felt in my heart that the Lord said, this is the only opportunity I can give you because you've done so much damage and so much harm mm. that you only... So you knew this was your... You only have one chance to make right with me. Mm. And I bent my knee to the cross of Jesus Christ. And I threw away $100,000 worth of witchcraft stuff. And I traded daddies for the one that it was real. Mm -hmm. And I left the counterfeit. And so what happened when you knelt your knee at the cross? I knelt my knee at the cross and I felt the love that wrapped around me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he said, you are my son. And I, and I call you to be an evangelist and warn my church mm -hmm. of wow. the dangers of the dark side. I have heard uh -huh. so many people that I've interviewed over the last 30 years, thousands of people literally, mm -hmm but so many times that have come from that type of experience, mm -hmm. and that's how they would describe the love of God, mm -hmm. that it wrapped mm -hmm. around me, it mm -hmm. enveloped yeah. me, and that's the kind mm -hmm. of love that the Lord has uh, for you yeah. today. Mm -hmm. He wants to wrap himself oh, around you and love time. you. How, how are you different after that? It took a, tr it took the, I had a friend here, one of them Brady Brunch station wagons, mm -hmm. and we <laughs> filled it up twice <laughs> to throw away the witchcraft stuff. Wow. And I was broke, but happy. I didn't have furniture, but I was happy. I didn't have to borrow clothes, but I was happy. <laughs> and for the first time, I felt light. I, I was going to say, like, I see the light in your eyes. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. people know, people that had known you, were they like, John, what has happened to you? Oh, yes. I mean, I got people to tell me right now, your eyes are different. Yes, your eyes are they, different. Yes, what they sparkle. The, what did the warlocks do? Because you have all these people that have invested all of this into yeah. you. Mm -hmm. What yeah, do they have to say about Because, of course, this? they would immediately <laughs> turn against you. Oh, this, I got a phone call last December from the, 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 from the people in Miami. And they said, we hate you. Why are you still exposing us? Yeah. We're going to still come for you. Mm. And I, I started to minister. And they started to cough and manifest on the phone. They hung up the phone mm. because they couldn't handle the power of Jesus Christ. Yes. 
But I love that you're not scared of them. No. You've got a greater power on the inside. Oh, I'm not scared of yeah. nobody. Yeah. So yeah. talk I about the Jesus, power. Of, yeah, talk <laughs> about the difference between the power of darkness and the power of God. Compare those two. There's no comparison. You can't compare Jesus to nobody. You know, even in the even when Moses he made a promise to Moses, he said, "I'll be back. Let me see who I can swear myself to." Uh, there was he came back and the Lord said, "This one want to swear. I'm, the, I'm I am it." You know, I'm the one. <laughs> There's no greater. You can't compare Jesus to nobody. There's no comparison. Jesus has to be revealed. He can't be told. What about your mom mm-hmm. and your family? What happened as a result of you oh, making that decision? Man, that's another, that's and another, your daughter? that's another, that's another show. <laughs> my mom was a Jehovah's Witness for eight years. And because of the love of Jesus Christ, my mom almost died five times in one day. And the, all the Christians bum rushed the hospital. My mom gave her life to the Lord. Mm-hmm. My grandmother, before she passed away, gave her life. My brother, he was homosexual, bisexual, trisexual, and <laughs> transvestite, and married, oh and a goodness. witchcraft. My brother, my yeah. second oldest brother. We used to have fights, and my mom used to say, uh, you come an hour before, you come an hour later. And my brother got a uh, heart attack. He was going to go for surgery. I went to the hospital and preached the gospel to my brother. And my brother accepted Jesus. Mm-hmm. And a week before his birthday, he went home with the Lord. Mm. Uh, and your daughter? My daughter, uh, she uh, renounced all the stuff of witchcraft, wow. and I let I let my daughter to the Lord. <sighs> wow! So God and is so, good. W- yes. Of course, the books. You know, um, we barely scratched the surface. <laughs> Two books, out of the Devil's Cauldron, and his new book, Strategies to Defeat Eternity's Greatest Enemy: Unmasking. The Devil. This is the the brand the brand new book. Mm-hmm. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left. I just want you to look in the camera, if you would, John, and encourage those. I believe we're right here. Oh, encourage we're, those we're that are okay. watching today. <laughs> um, why Jesus is is the answer to every question. You know, I try. You know, one thing I want to say to people real quick. I try clubs, women, money, the devil himself for 25 years, contract everything. And nothing can fulfill your life. Nothing can touch your life. Nothing that can repair and put your life in whole shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. But the man himself, the man Jesus. Trust me, I am nothing broken in my life. All because I say yes to Jesus Christ and no to the devil. And whatever situation you're in, do one thing. Give Jesus, do like, take the Pepsi challenge. Give Jesus 30 days. <laughs> and I guarantee you, you'll be calling the show and share your testimony yes. that your life has mm-hmm. been changed and transformed by the creator that loves you beyond you can ever imagine. Amen. Well, we're out of time. I want to thank John for joining us at the table. Be sure to check out his book, Unmasking the Devil. A lot more information in there. It's available now. And for more about his ministry, you can visit him online at johnramirez.org. And listen, if you're watching today and you're tired of being beat up by the enemy, you can uh, kind of understand some of the things we've talked about. You've experienced some things you don't really understand. You want freedom today. I'm going to tell you that Jesus has overcome yes. mm-hmm. all the works of darkness by the finished work of the cross. He did it all for me, for you, and for everyone sitting at this table. And all you have to do is call out on his name today. There's a number on the screen. We have wonderful prayer partners that are standing by ready to pray with you. You can also go to daystar.com, click on prayer, send your prayer request in. If you have a question, if you want someone to call you back, if you get a busy signal, we'll call you back. Uh, We would love to pray with you today. We'd love to encourage you and let you know that God is not finished with you. We'd also like for you to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook or you can tweet me at Daystar Joni. Remember to use hashtag Joni Table Talk. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, John. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for sharing your story. We appreciate it so much. Amazing people of God. Thank Amen. you. Amen. We'll see you next time. Bye bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.